Hi friends! If you're new here, welcome. This video is gonna be a little bit different than all of my other videos. I wanted to do like an old school YouTube vlog, sit down and spew my thoughts and opinions at you because I have a lot of them. I could not fall asleep last night because I had all of these thoughts running through my head and I really wanted to share them. So yeah, let's get into it. So I wanted to talk about something that I haven't heard people talk about when it comes to Palestine and Israel, um, which is that the American perception of race and racism plays into the way that we view that conflict. Um, I hope calling it a conflict isn't like triggering to people because I know that um, mm, there are things about that. We're not going to get into that right now. Uh, but yeah, I haven't heard people talk about this and I genuinely think that the American as an American, the American perception of race and racism plays into the way that we view what's happening in Israel and Palestine. So, and okay, I'm gonna be going off of a, a critical race theory framework uh, here, assuming that we understand that racism is something that continues to permeate uh, being taught from generation to generation and something that will continue to exist even if you have colorblind legislation because the way that that legislation is uh, <laughs> enacted um, and, and applied will be racist by nature of people being racist uh, by nature of being fed racist rhetoric uh, so yeah and also this is coming from me as someone who was raised in a Ashkenazi, mainly white Ashkenazi Jewish community here in the Northeast United States, uh, but also as a non-white person. Um, I'm Asian, fun fact. But yeah, I was, I was kind of brought into a, a pretty pro-Israel, not that everyone was really pro-Israel, but a, a generally pretty pro-Israel uh, space. And like we had Israeli emissaries at Hebrew school when I went to Hebrew school. Uh, and they they didn't necessarily, I think, try to hide things. There was some, like, I remember there was a video that an Israeli emissary showed us that did show some of the horrors that the Israeli government is uh, kind of doing to the people of Palestine. Um, so it wasn't like, I mean, everything is biased, but I, I want to say that they didn't completely try to, like, wash over that. Um, but yeah. Generally, there are a lot of white Ashkenazi Jews that, at least in this country that I know of, that are pretty pro-Israel. And what I wanted to say about the American perception of race and racism playing into the way that we view this conflict is that to me and what I experienced, the people of Israel and just Israel as a whole is viewed as more white or more uh, adjacent to whiteness than the people of Palestine. And I know that this is kind of debatable and I know that there is anti-Semitism uh, and I'm not trying to deny that, but Israel has the stamp of approval from the American government, from a lot of European governments, um, and it is seen as, to me, it's, it's pretty, like, sometimes, yes, sometimes they're, they're kind of seen as white, sometimes they're not, uh, and they don't really have, like, white pre protection, um, but Palestinians are always viewed as people of color, period. Uh, at least that has been my perception, always viewed as people of color, whereas the people of Israel, sometimes viewed as people of color, sometimes viewed as white, but generally more adjacent to whiteness than the people of Palestine. And even though it's not as big of a difference as if you're looking at black and white people in America, our perception of race and racism because of American racism plays into this, because we are being told, whether <laughs> directly or indirectly, that it's okay for the military to shoot at black and brown people for existing. It's okay for black and brown people to have rubber bullets shot at them, to be brutalized. Like, even if you don't believe that those things are okay, there is some element, I think, that existing in this country and, and seeing what happens in this country, we come to understand that these things are normal and that these things are okay. And I think that that perception plays into the way that we view the Israeli government's treatment of Palestinian people as it's okay for brown people to be brutalized for just existing. Yeah, I haven't heard anyone try to make that connection, um, but I think it's really important because this applies not only to white people, but to people like myself who are not white, who still uh, have this perception um, because we're it's being pushed on us, this racist, Racist ideas 
are, are pushed on you by default of existing in a racist society. So, um, yeah. Let me look at my notes. I wrote notes at like 3 a.m. Okay, so I've heard a lot of people who wouldn't call themselves pro-Palestine um, preach this idea of peace and reconciliation and like let's just talk, like let's talk kind of kind of mentality, kind of solution. Um, and almost ironically, while I believe that that is the solution, I don't believe that you can preach that while also excusing literally any of the treatment of the Israeli government towards the people of Palestine. Um, because to me, what it, what it looks like and what it sounds like is people saying, well, they're anti-Semitic and they don't like us and they have hurt us, therefore it's okay for us to be in this position of power and and, and and shooting rubber bullets and and brutalizing and like systemic kind of abuse. Yeah, it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It almost, okay, and this is gonna be a really, a really loose comparison, but it almost gives kind of white people in America telling black people to get over racism kind of vibes to me because it's like you can't get over something that is continuing to cause harm to you. Um, like it just like, <laughs> it doesn't really make sense to ask someone to, to talk and to learn when you are still shooting them in the streets, when you're still shooting them at grocery stores. It, do it doesn't make sense. You can't ask that of someone. Um, so yeah, I mean, to my knowledge, Palestinian people are incarcerated at a higher rate, at a higher percentage of the population than black Americans are. Like, it's bad. It's really, really bad. And I mean, this is almost me, you know, showing my little anarchy side. So we're gonna pretend that that's not, that's not happening. But um, yeah, I just, I find it really hard to understand how people can feel like it's reasonable to preach this kind of let's let's reconcile let's understand each other while also excusing any of the abuse because i think for truly for reconciliation to happen in any situation all parties need to one stop hurting each other at least intentionally uh and two to take accountability for the harm that they have caused um and given that israel is currently in the position of power i feel like they're the ones who would need to start that process so the fact that they aren't starting that process, like unless you were preaching that they start that that reconciliation process, uh, not that I know like exactly what that would look like, but like the fact that they aren't, it's just like you can't you can't point a gun at someone and then say let's talk. Like it just it's not it doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, I mean maybe you can. I don't know. I've never personally had a gun pointed at me. Thank God. Um, but yeah, um, anyways, I'm gonna eat my challah with brie cheese and strawberry cream cheese. Is that a weird combination? Maybe it is. So where my mind went after that was thinking about how it seems, okay, so my perception of white Ashkenazi Jews uh, growing up in that community was that I'm about to make a I'm about to make a, a connection that I don't know if y'all are expecting or ready for, but um, yeah, my perception was that white Ashkenazi Jews benefit from white supremacy, often hold internalized racist ideas and kind of subscribe to white supremacy in some ways. I'm not talking about all white Ashkenazi Jews, but like like a, a decent portion of them um, subscribe to some of these ideas while not being protected by white supremacy and. I think that this is a little bit similar to the way that white women also kind of, a lot of them kind of subscribe to white supremacy and patriarchy while not being protected by it. And that is shown by current events that like in 2020, over 50% of white women who voted voted for Trump, which to me shows that white women, a lot of white women feel like they have more to gain by keeping their place, you know, at the bright hand of white men versus intersectional feminism. Not that not that the Democratic Party represents intersectional feminism, but if you're going to compare and put that on one party 
would have to be the Democratic Party. But that, uh, we're gonna ignore that for a second. Um, but yeah, to me that shows that there are a, a large number of white women who feel like they have more to gain through subscribing to white supremacy, maintaining white supremacy than through intersexual feminism, which I also see in the white Ashkenazi Jewish community, which is really interesting because neither of those groups are really truly protected by white supremacy and patriarchy. Like they do benefit from it, they benefit from white privilege, they benefit from white privilege, but they they aren't really protected by the system. They just kind of, they benefit kind of like as a side thing. Um, but yeah, I mean like white women's basic bodily autonomy is under attack right now, um, which shows that, you know, to the white men who are running this country, they are in fact not really people. Um, yeah, so it just kind of makes me wonder like, these white supremacist ideas become so incredibly internalized that groups like white Ashkenazi Jews and like white women subscribe to them even though they aren't beneficial, even though they cause harm to them. Um, and it just kind of makes me wonder like how do you, how does one reach these people? How does one, how does one convince these people that it is in their best interest and that they should want to unite on uh, on the front of, you know, like basic rights and freedom for everyone, intersectional feminism, um, versus subscribing to white supremacist ideas that truly, in my opinion, aren't really benefiting them. And I mean, it's, it's really up for debate. Like, I mean, I don't think it is because like for white women, like is your bodily autonomy worth like, white privilege? I don't know. Um, personally, I would say definitely not, but that's just me. But yeah, I mean, not that long ago, there was a incident of Jewish people being held hostage, right? They were being held hostage, and basically, like, the, the, the formal, like, government systems weren't really helping them for a while. Um, and I think it kind of shows, like, the recent shooting in Buffalo, the guy who did it was like a self-proclaimed anti-Semitic like white supremacist, um, which is so interesting to me because it's like these, these systems of white supremacy and patriarchy function on oppressing Jewish people and oppressing women as well as, you know, disabled people, people of color, LGBTQ people. Uh, and yet so many people and so many of those groups continue to believe in them and continue to push ideas that are so incredibly harmful to themselves and their communities. I mean, part of it is like how, how I keep talking about this, but how incredibly internalized these systems become. Like, like capitalism, I can try to unlearn it, but some part of me still thinks that my worth is based on how productive I am in capitalism. And some part of me still thinks that I need to achieve greatness in order to have value. Uh, which are capitalist ideas. Some part of me thinks that if I'm not contributing, then I'm a waste of space. That is a capitalist idea that is internalized. Uh, so like those things get so deep into your your mind that they can become things you, do, you think are like inherent traits of humanity and inherent kind of ways that the world works when they are in fact constructs. They are things that have been made up and created by people. Uh, so. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I have for you today. Let me look at my, did I write anything else in my notes? I know in, in a lot of kind of activist spaces, people talk about how, you know, white, cishet, able-bodied men aren't the only ones who are the problem, and I believe that, which is kind of what I'm saying. It's complicated because there are so many, like white LGBTQ people, even LGBTQ people of color, like myself included, um, white Jews, white women, like, continue to push harmful systems and harmful ideas while not really fully reaping their benefits because they aren't those people on the top. They aren't the people who really, truly are the, the ones who are granted humanity and freedom. So, yeah, um, wait, I wanna eat my, I wanna eat my thingy. 
If you want to see more videos like this where I just kind of spew my opinions at you without any other footage, and if this is the first video that you've seen of me, um, hi. I generally make historical sewing content, vintage sewing content, um, which is very different than this. Uh, and occasionally I will incorporate my opinions and takes into those things. But yeah, um, I kind of like just sitting down and spewing my thoughts. So if you like this video, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more content like this from me, let me know. Uh, and yeah, subscribe if you want to. You're probably going to get a lot of content that is not at all similar to this if you do so. But you'll get me, so if that's what you want to see, I'm here. Uh, and yeah, bye. Okay, and like, I just want to reiterate that I do not have all the answers and I do not have, like, these are not even really fully formed opinion. These are just kind of thoughts, various thoughts and ideas that are like, like I said, this is, this isn't a video essay. This is an old school vlog. So yeah, okay, so that's that. Um, thank you for watching. And if you're still here, I don't know why you're still here, but I love you and I appreciate you. And you should comment, uh, wait, what should you comment? You should comment uh, your lucky number and your favorite or least favorite food, but don't tell people when which one, it, don't tell people which one it is. Yeah, okay, bye.